California junior senator Kamala Harris is quickly becoming a rising star on the national political scene, gaining widespread acclaim and criticism for her recent performances during the congressional hearings looking into the Trump administration's ties to Russia. But just who is this new star in American politics? Where did she come from? And why is she captivating so many new followers and critics? On October 20th, 1964, Kamala Devi Harris was born to an Indian mother and a Jamaican-American father in Oakland, California. Her mother was a breast cancer researcher, her father an economics professor at Stanford University. The two met on campus at UC Berkeley while protesting for civil rights in the 1960s. My mother understood that as an Indian woman she had given birth to these two daughters who were African American, will be African American women and she raised us in the African American community. And, um, and it was a community surrounded by people, be it our Indian relatives or the Jamaican relatives or our extended family, um, who all believed that children should be nurtured and supported. After her parents divorced, a young Kamala and her younger sister, Maya, moved with their mother into a predominantly black neighborhood in Berkeley, California. Later, the single mother would move her daughters from Berkeley to Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Upon graduating Westmont High School in Quebec, Kamala would make her way to Washington, D.C. to attend college at Howard University. There, she would major in political science and economics. She was also elected to the student council, became a member of the debate team, and became a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. After graduating from Howard, Kamala attended law school at the University of California Hastings, where she received her JD in 1989. Although Kamala failed to pass the California bar exam the first time she took it, she was eventually admitted to the State Bar of California in the year 1990. During the early 1990s, violent crime and drug use was reaching a fever pitch in Oakland, California. Lawmakers during that time, including many prominent Democrats, took a quote, tough on crime approach, which led to unfair profiling and sentencing of individuals, particularly from communities of color. Kamala decided that she would pursue a career in law enforcement to try and change the broken system from within. A lot of the passion there was that vulnerable people and voiceless people must be heard. So when I made the decision in law school to become a prosecutor, I decided that let's not accept false choices about what it means to be a voice for the voiceless. Uh, because the reality is to be a prosecutor means to be a voice for some of the most vulnerable in our community. From 1990 to 1998, Kamala served as a deputy district attorney in Alameda County, which encompasses Oakland, California. She would spend her career working to try and make the criminal justice system more fair. After her tenure in Alameda County, Kamala took her work across the Bay Bridge to San Francisco, where she would work in the career criminal unit of the DA's office. She would go on to serve in various capacities in San Francisco law and was recognized by California's most influential legal newspaper, The Daily Journal, as one of the top lawyers in the state. In 2003, Kamala challenged her former boss, Terrence Hollinan, in the election for San Francisco district attorney. Hollinan was the two-term incumbent district attorney whose tenure was mostly rife with dysfunction, scandal, and driving a wedge between the DA's office, the police department, and City Hall. Having worked for Holland and for a brief time in the late 1990s, Kamala saw firsthand the dysfunction of the San Francisco DA's office. But she was a political novice, who opponents tried to paint as nothing more than a socialite who owed her success to her high-powered connections. Many saw her as having virtually no chance of beating a polished politician such as Hollinan. When her first polling results came in, the young prosecutor was at a mere 6% in the polls. Despite the initial outlook, Kamala persisted and managed to finish second place behind Hollinan in the general election. This forced the two Democrats to face off once more in a runoff election to determine the winner. On November 4th, 2003, Kamala shocked everyone when she was elected San Francisco's district attorney, the first African-American woman in history to do so, and the first career prosecutor to head the office in nearly a generation. 
When Kamala took office in 2004, it became clear just how dysfunctional the district attorney's office was. Despite being situated in a city at the forefront of the tech boom, the office did not have its own email address or a requisite number of computers. The budget for office supplies was so scarce that at times, District Attorney Harris would use her personal credit card to cover the cost for the office to properly do its business. Despite these challenges, Kamala was eager to get to work reforming the San Francisco justice system. Upon taking office, Kamala made it her business to clear up the backlog of murder cases left behind from the previous administration. She developed a hate crimes unit that dealt specifically with hate crimes against LGBTQ teens and children. She initiated a program that gave first-time drug offenders a chance to earn their high school diploma and find a job, rather than going directly to jail. We are going to take them who have in San Francisco a recidivism rate of 47%, and we're going to look at what we can do to re-enter them into the community in a way they can be productive. We create a life plan for them with their help, which includes what's your educational status, what is your housing status? What are you doing in terms of your parenting? Because a lot of these young folks are parents. What are we doing in terms of helping you to parent your children? She believed that one way to make communities safer was to give first-time offenders an opportunity to resettle into productive lives upon re-entry into society. It would be better in terms of use of my resources to help direct you out of the system and in that way prevent crime from happening again than it would be to allow you all to be in a cycle where things just keep happening, where you get a felony conviction and then you can't get a job and then you can't go on and be productive, right? Although some critics may have saw her approach as lenient, Kamala proved to be tough when it came to handing down justice. Overall, during her tenure, the felony conviction rate went from 52% before she took office to 67% near the end of her first term. Drug dealer convictions rose from 56% in 2003 to 74% in 2006. During that same time, homicide convictions were at 85%. Kamala's smart on crime approach to justice made her a rising star in California politics. Proving herself to be a forward, progressive thinker even being the first public official in California to endorse Barack Obama for president in 2007, Kamala was ready to take her work beyond San Francisco. In November 2008, Kamala announced her intention to run for Attorney General of California, a post held by then former Governor of California, Jerry Brown. With strong endorsements from California Senators Dianne Feinstein and Barbara Boxer, as well as then Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, District Attorney Harris easily won the Democratic nomination for AG with 33% of the vote. She would go on in the general election to defeat Los Angeles District Attorney Steve Cooley by more than 74,000 votes. Kamala made history again, this time on a number of fronts, becoming the first female, the first African American, and the first Indian American Attorney General in the history of California. I simply want to say thank you. I am deeply humbled by the trust you have placed in me. A literal daughter of Brown versus the Board of Education, now invested with the power and the responsibility of enforcing the law. She easily won re-election in 2014 with more than 56% of the vote. As Attorney General, Kamala took on a number of the hard-pressing issues Californians were facing, including prison reform, truancy, and the subprime mortgage crisis fallout from the U.S. economic recession. Kamala took on the banks and lending agencies that engaged in predatory lending practices which led many Californians to lose their homes during the recession. She secured more than $12 billion of debt reduction for the state's homeowners and $26 billion overall. In 2012, Kamala's name was being mentioned by political professionals and pundits as being on a short list to replace then U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder in President Obama's administration. While the post ultimately went to Loretta Lynch, 
it remained clear that Kamala had tremendous appeal and potential to be a player in national politics. In 2015, longtime California U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer announced that she would retire after her term ended in 2016. And making it official today, California's Attorney General Kamala Harris announced that she will indeed run for the U.S. Senate. Her announcement comes just days after current California Senator Barbara Boxer said that she would not be running again after holding that seat for the past two decades. Harris making the announcement by... Kamala announced her candidacy to run for Senator Boxer's seat. She easily won the election, making history once again as the first African-American and the first Asian American U.S. Senator to represent California. She is also one of only a few African American women to ever have served in the United States Senate. But time for celebrating her historic election was short-lived. She was elected the same night that Donald J. Trump became President-elect of the United States and the night that Republicans took control of both houses of Congress, crushing both Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party in a shocking defeat. His divisive agenda threatened the rights of many vulnerable Americans, many of whom Kamala was to represent in California. And I intend to fight. I intend to fight for our ideals. I intend to fight for Black Lives Matters. I intend to fight for truth and transparency and trust. I believe this is that moment in time that many of us in our personal lives have faced, where we are collectively being required to look in a mirror, and with furrowed brow, we are asking a question, who are we? In California, I believe the answer is a good one. We are a great country. We are a great country. And part of what Upon taking office, Kamala would immediately get to work, promising to fight President Trump's agenda every step of the way. Less than two weeks after taking office, Kamala gave a stirring speech at the Women's March on Washington, D.C. We must recommit our power and our purpose. Let's go back to Ohio and New York and Florida and California and let's get to work. In the Senate, she voted to block Judge Neil Gorsuch's nomination to the Supreme Court. She has been working to protect the civil rights of women, immigrants, dreamers, American Muslims, and students. She has been an outspoken opponent of President Trump's agenda. While her term is just getting started, her name is already being floated around as a potential candidate for president in 2020, a notion she denies stating that she is focused on her work as a United States Senator. Whatever her future holds, Kamala Harris appears to already be making an impact on the American political stage. It will be fascinating to see where she goes from here.